Thanks, Chief. Last month, the 10.08 Animal Plant or Pest Biosecurity Emergency SOP was approved. The development of this SOP followed several months of work with the control agency, Agriculture Victoria, and subject matter experts. This SOP outlines key considerations for members when undertaking responses into affected properties, including the need to minimise the number of vehicles and persons entering affected areas, the potential risk to members and public health through the spread of zoonotic diseases, and the need for decontamination to occur before departing the property. While CFA has powers to enter property to reduce the severity of fire or protect life and property, it is important to consider the potential impacts a biosecurity risk could have on the wider community. Members should ensure that they seek advice early via the district or state duty officer to ensure appropriate advice and support can be provided as part of any response. The policy and doctrine team is continuing the process of supporting doctrine renewal and tonight I'm excited to advise that CFA is releasing a further 14 SOPs for formal consultation with members. This includes 10.28 lithium ion batteries undergoing thermal runaway, which has been developed with a number of different suppression strategies to enable flexibility in responding to events involving different types of batteries. 10.29 electrical vehicle incidents is interoperable with the thermal runaway SOP and includes additional advice about hydrogen vehicles. 10.31 work in the rail corridor has been developed to ensure consistency when responding in and around the rail corridor and ensure timely notification to Firecom when members enter the corridor. 11.04, working near electrical structures and conductors has been extensively reviewed in accordance with distances and practices in the National Guidelines on Electrical Safety for Emergency Personnel, and now includes specific information about the risk of arcing through smoke. 11.11, .11, management of jewellery and body hair combines two different SOPs and has been updated to be more inclusive. A gender impact assessment was undertaken as part of the review and feedback provided by the Women's Advisory Committee. I would encourage you to go to policies.cfa.vic.gov.au and to click on the bulletin board to provide feedback about these documents and other documents that are there. The policy and doctrine team will be slowing down the development of some SOPs for a short period of time to support the development of content for CFA's pocketbook application which will be released in the future but we'll continue to publish SOPs as each feedback period concludes with VFBV. Back to you, Chief.